Hello, in this video, we are going to do a classic related rates problem from calculus. This particular example is taken directly from the free book, openstacks.org, or it's an open source book. And uh, you can go to openstacks.org and look at calculus volume one and look at this example. But you see this in other major textbooks. And what you have here is you have a balloon, which I've drawn myself. And here I have this spherical balloon and it's being inflated at a constant rate. A spherical, a spherical balloon is being filled with air at a constant rate of two centimeters cubed per second. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is three centimeters? All right, let's write down some ideas first before we solve this. Let's write down what's given to us. So given is that uh, the volume is increasing at a constant rate. And so putting that in calculus language, what we write is that the derivative of the volume dv dt is equal to two. You can put the units or not. So the derivative of the volume with respect to time is increasing at two centimeters cubed per second. It's, it's, we write down positive two because it's increasing. The volume is increasing. And let's also uh, write down what we're trying to find then. We're trying to find what? We're trying to find the rate of change of the radius. So, okay, so that's what it says right here. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is three centimeters? So in calculus language, we're going to write, uh, find um, dr dt when r equals three centimeters. That's what we're trying to find. There used to, uh, a lot of books used to do this, or they still probably do. You could put a bar r equals three. That's a little shorter, but a lot of books stop doing that because maybe it's, I don't know, it's good, it's shorter, but maybe the notation might be difficult. It might be hard to typeset, but you could write drdt, find drdt when r equals three. That's a good way to write it. Okay, um, let's see. And now what I'm going to do next is uh, write down formulas. And this, uh, by the way, I believe is a really good approach for any um, problem solving in general. Write down what's given, you know, what you know, what are you trying to find? Draw a figure over here, draw a figure. And um, so this is, I think this, this is what problem you do in problem solving, okay. So the formulas we have are something that most people probably would not memorize. Um, volume of a sphere, let me write that down. Volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is given by V equals four thirds pi R cubed. So it's not like uh, one of those things that most people remember. And, and besides this formula, if you wanted to prove this formula, it's, it's gonna require math that we haven't done in, in a, up to this point in a first year calculus course. But anyway, just we'll just assume that that is true. So, okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to differentiate, or I'll write derivative. But also I wanna um, maybe stop and, and talk about what we're going to expect to see. If you think about when you blow up a balloon, when, it, when it's, you know, you, you just have a little balloon and you blow it up, at first, when you're blowing, and you're blowing at a constant rate, it seems to grow really quickly at first. But then, when the balloon gets larger, you know, it has more air in it, you're, uh, you might be, a person might be blowing into it, and it doesn't seem like it's growing that much. So that even though the rate of change of the volume is constant, we'll, we will see that the rate of change of, of the radius is not constant. The extreme case would be if you had a, you know, the balloon the size of the earth, so the earth, and you, you're blowing into that balloon, that earth, it's not, the radius is not gonna grow by anything at all perceptible, you know, so 
Okay, so what, so let's take the derivative. Um, maybe it looks a little bit like I'm doubling up with with my information or my what I'm writing down, but I guess I'll just one more time write the, this formula for uh, volume again, and now I'll take the derivative with respect to time. Everything here is changing with respect to time. So one of the things I really need to point out is that we are assuming that the radius r and the volume v are functions of time. They change as time changes. So I apply the derivative um, to both sides of this equation. And so when I take the derivative of volume with respect to time, I can just write dv dt. And, and as I see above, that, that's given as 2. Now when I come over to the right-hand side, 4 thirds pi is a constant, and we're multiplying a constant by a function, so I leave that constant untouched alone. And then I get to this guy, this r to the third power, and I need to, uh, well, I need to work on that, do something with that. Okay, this is a composition. It's the function r raised to the third power, and we use the chain rule. That's uh, a little bit tricky there, but we're going to use the chain rule. Well, maybe it isn't tricky. Anyway. So we have three, whatever is inside to the second power, and what's inside is r. So that doesn't seem, you know, just the derivative of r cubed is three r squared. But because uh, I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, so I just took the derivative with respect to, to r, I'm taking it with respect to t, so I have to multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t, which is dr dt. Um, by the way, sometimes I just use the prime notation. That seems like, you know, why not? But you can use prime notation. Let's see, those cancel out. So you could write like this, v prime equals four pi r squared dr dt. And now, uh, now what I'm going to do is substitute in or fill in some values here. Some, So I fill in, and actually I'm not gonna fill in everything at once. Let me start by, because I think I'll learn something or it'll demonstrate something. Fill in that, again, I write dv dt equals 2 centimeters per second. You don't have to write it again, but that's what our given was. And I'm going to fill that in. So I get 2 equals dv dt, or I wrote v prime there. 2 equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. Now I'm later going to go ahead and put in r equals... Uh, um, r equals 3, because I'm trying to find dr dt when r equals 3. But bef before I do that, I just wanted to check this out so that we can see something that's sort of interesting, which is how um, dr dt is um, expressed as a function of r. Now, this is when, this is when the volume is increasing at a constant rate. But if the volume is increasing at a constant rate, what we see is that the change of rate of the radius is inverse re inversely proportion to r squared. It's sort of interesting. So it makes sense then, if we look at this formula, it makes sense what we're seeing is that when the balloon becomes large, the rate of change of the radius doesn't seem that much because you have one over r squared. If r becomes large, one of our squares is a small number, and the rate of change of the radius is small. Again, that's when we have constant rate of change in volume. And then let's go ahead and, and uh, put in r equals 3 centimeters, because at the very beginning of the directions, it says um, how fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 3 centimeters. Sort of small, because I'm trying to show everything there. Uh, actually, everything was maybe sort of small from the beginning. Uh, okay, um, next time make it bigger, I don't know. So uh, dr dt equals 1 over 2 pi 3 squared, which is 1 over 2 pi times 3 squared is 9. So dr dt equals 1 over 18 pi, I should say again, when r equals 3 centimeters, because it's not true all the time. In fact, maybe I will just go ahead and 
write this notation that's not as often used in some first year calculus books, but maybe I will write when r equals three equals one over 18 pi. And that is a rate of change of centimeters per second, because r is in centimeters, t is in seconds, and that is when r equals three centimeters. So our answer is right here. And also, sometimes people, uh, write, probably they're right, rightly so, would say, let's write it, let's say it in words, but okay. The radius increases at a rate of 1 over 18 pi centimeters per second when r equals 3 centimeters. It's, my writings maybe could be improved upon in neatness there. So I'll erase and make it better. But why didn't I just write more neatly the first time so I didn't have to erase? Hmm. Okay, so that really finishes the video. I just thought I'd make this part look a little better, but that's, that's it. So again, this is a classic beginning calculus problem. You see this in not just this free book by OpenStax that you can just look online and see in section 4.1, if it's OpenStax related rates, OpenStax, and then you go to the first example, 4.1, and you see the balloon problem. But, you know, that's free. You can go to openstacks.org, but you can look at other major calculus books and they'll have the same problem, different numbers, but same thing. Okay, and uh, anyway, that's all. Okay, thank you. Bye.